Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take an ink drawing and turn it into um, a vector drawing. I have this image here that I've taken with my iPhone of something that I drew in my sketchbook. And you can see there's some issues with it. There's uh, a, another image that's bleeding through from another page up here in the right-hand corner and down below here in the bottom. Um, so those are the things that I'm going to have to contend with and fix before I bring them into Illustrator and live trace them. So I brought this into Photoshop. I'm going to go to Image, Adjustment, Desaturate. I want to work with an image that's purely in grayscale. It's uh, easier to contend with and to work with the, uh, the black and white values. Then once I do that, I'm going to go to Image, Adjustment again and open up the levels console. And you see I have these sliders here and I'm going to work with the right hand slider and the left hand slider. And the right hand slider will control the highlights or the lighter parts of the image and the left hand slider will control the, the low lights or the darker parts of the image. So I'm going to bring this in towards the middle. This is our histogram showing the input levels. And right now, I've blown out a lot of my drawing. You can see I'm losing some detail in here. So with this left-hand slider, I'm going to bring that towards the middle, and it's going to make those, the, the ink drawing really dark again. And I think that looks pretty good. You're going to have to kind of gauge that on your own, and you may also need to go back to your original ink drawing and fill it in a little bit more if too much of the detail is disappearing. I'm going to click OK. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Save it to my desktop as test image. OK, and then go to Illustrator and you're going to open that same image. Test image. And here it is. It opened up really big in Illustrator, which is fine. You want to work as big as you can, as much as, you know, as, as big as you can without your applications crashing on you. Because you can always scale down, but you can scale up. I am going to make my artboard the same size as my piece. And now we're going to live trace it. So with my selection tool or my black arrow, I'm just going to select my image. And you should see your user interface in Illustrator change to the image trace right up here. You can see there's a little button I can click that says image trace. If you don't see this, you have a couple of options. You can go to window workspace and change your workspace. Sometimes I've found that essentials sort of resets and I lose a bunch of my palettes and I don't know where they went, where they've gone. So I'll choose a different workspace. Or you could also go under Object, Image Trace, Make and Expand. All right, I'm just going to click Image Trace up here. And it's going to tell me that's going to take a while. It really won't, but because it's such a large image, it just takes a, not even a second. And it's live traced my image. This is actually a vector image now, even though I don't have access to these individual shapes and paths. In order to get access to that, you need to expand your image trace. Okay. Uh, once again, up here, on my interface changed, so I can just simply click expand and convert that traced object into paths. If you don't see that, you can just go to object expand. It's the same idea. I'm going to click expand, and now you can see that my uh, my objects. Are all our paths now with anchor points and there's a ton of anchor points but this is a complicated drawing so that's going to happen so even though we have individual paths illustrator is still grouping everything together so it's still grouping this whole image with that white background and we don't want that we want to isolate the black ink drawing from the background so in order to do that you have to ungroup the piece so you go to the very first thing you do is image trace then you expand, and then you ungroup. So I'm going to go to Object, Ungroup. Now sometimes if you have a very complicated object or image that you have um, live traced, you may need to ungroup it more than once. 
Let's see if that's the case here. Nope, we're good. We only need to ungroup at the one time. I still want to delete all of this white background though. I only want my black ink drawing. So instead of going in here and holding down shift and selecting all of these individual pieces, I'm going to just select one of these white background pieces. I know that it's white because I'm looking at my fill and my stroke over here and it only has selected something that's white. And I'm going to go up to the top of my menu, my, my menu bar, go to select same fill color and it's going to select all of that white and I'm going to hit delete. And to double check to make sure that I in fact deleted all of the white background, I'm going to do a little test. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to stick it below layer one. And I'm going to throw a shape behind there that has a different color. Good. And so what this is telling me is that there is no white background that is combined with the ink drawing anymore. And what's really nice about this is now these are individual pieces because they're ungrouped. So I can modify my drawing even more if I wanted to. I could select certain pieces and move them. I can duplicate them with Command C and Command V. I could rotate them. I can even scale them. So you can continue editing your drawing beyond the sketchbook. And all of these are individual pieces too. I could even copy and paste and have another element of design somewhere else on the page. And that's it.